I'm excited for this one because I made a post on Facebook and I said, hey, what do you guys want us to talk about? And the majority of what people wanted to talk about was what? Websites. Ooh, the infamous websites. Home base, if you will. Welcome back to another episode of the Monarch Social Podcast, where we discuss all things digital marketing. In hopes to give you, the viewers at home, some valuable insight into this digital marketing world. Yeah, and it's a big digital marketing world. Getting bigger every day. This isn't some little preschool stuff. No. There's always things changing. Man, there's... This is a weird industry. It's a great industry, though. It's an amazing industry, but like you have to be on your toes. I like that it's like cutting edge because everything is changing, but it's literally the future. You you can't be like a one-trick pony. Like, for example, if you just do Facebook ads or if you're really good at websites because everything always changes, whether it's Google changing or Facebook changing or SEO changing, whatever it is, like things are always changing. And evolving, getting better. Especially this year. There's oh, yeah. a lot that has changed this, this year, year. And we've said it multiple times, but this year has pushed humanity into the future. Oh, by, by a years lot. and years and years and years. If you were 20 years ago, if you were to be like, yeah, at some point we're going to, everybody's going to work virtually from the comfort of their own home. Yeah, I think Joe Rogan just posted a thing about that from the 50s. That oh, really? Some scientist guy was like, this is what's it going to be like in the year 2000, in- something <laughs> like that. And it was really weird. But, anyways, Koa, I digress. How how was your week, man? How how are you doing? Dude, we had a good What's week. Going on? This week was great. We uh, have some big projects coming up. So this kind of week was a week to clear the plate so we can handle everything next week, which is good. Yeah, Monarch is definitely in growth mode right now, which I love. We have a ton on our plate. Yes. And uh, getting new hires all trained up has been a thing that we've been dealing with. Mm-hmm. On top of, like you said, we have... We have a major client that's a, it's, it's one of our largest clients, but everything is due next week. And so this week was all crunch time, getting set up, prepped, ready to launch a huge marketing plan for one of our clients. Oh yes. Yeah. Two of, yeah, there's two big things, but everything's and going good on top of that. So with the podcast also, Co, like we've been interviewing a lot of people. Oh and yeah. Dude, this is the first time we're yeah, back. Welcome Just back. You and me. Welcome back. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. So welcome back. It feels weird not having another person here. I know. What do I do with my and hands? And this is the first time we've had it this, this setup. Style. And I kind of like it a lot. I, I like this setup. I think it's like way more relaxed. It's way more like comfortable. Way more us. Like, I mean, mm-hmm. I like the other one. It was really professional and we were right there and I didn't hate it, but I think this is more like, it's just relaxed. Chill. Yeah. This is just, relaxed. this is just who we are. Mm-hmm. You know, if you come to our office, we got love sacks and PS4s and, yeah. you know, we're pretty All chill. The screens. We like to call this place the clubhouse. Yeah. This is the clubhouse. That's really nice. So anyways, what are we talking about this week? Well, we've, we've been interviewing guests who are business owners or who have been doing marketing. And so with this episode, I really want to bring us back to our roots. I know we're only like 15 episodes in, but what I mean by that is bring us back to our roots to really provide some value, some teaching, some, uh, teach the, the viewers and listeners at home, um, some more valuable information. And rather than just having kind of an a type of interview with someone to actually teach something. Right. Like in all of our intros, teach people about this digital marketing world. Exactly. So that's where we're back at now. And I'm excited for this one because I made a post on Facebook and I said, Hey, what do you guys want us to talk about? And the majority of what people wanted to talk about was what websites. Ooh, the infamous websites home base, if you will. Yeah. And so we're going to jump into some website stuff Cool. And kind of provide you guys who are listening, if you're a business owner, if you have a website, if you need to get a website, some things to consider, some things to think about, pros, cons, must-haves, don'ts, the do's, all of that. And we might even, um, we were talking about this before the episode, do a deeper dive yeah. into I, websites because we realize it's just so it's much. so much. There's, it's so much. And I think like, I, I would love for us to talk, touch base on a lot of different things, but at some point I would like to literally show people if we could screen share i know we're not going to do any screen sharing this time but if we can go through screen share show examples i think that would be extremely valuable but as an overview i think you have to kind of do this this is going to be a fast track course this is the fast track course to all things website 
and uh, maybe the next one or two episodes. We haven't planned it out yet because we might have a guest next week. I'm not sure about that. Cool. But um, the, the next one about websites will be actually like a really deep dive into it. And so this will be pretty surface level, if you will. And uh, but yeah. We listen to the podcast. If we say some things, because we're going to be using acronyms and maybe some stuff that you've never heard of. Yeah. And if you don't understand that, I mean, obviously reach out, text us, message us, or just really listen it. to the podcast. And Google. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Google. So what are we going to do? Should we no, start with like the... We're going to start with platforms. Platforms? Okay. okay. So business owner. I, ha- I own a business. I have something. And now I got to choose a platform. Where do I build my website? What am I going to do? First thing I would say is uh, figure out what you're doing. What do you do as a company? What is your services? Do you offer products? Do you offer a service? What yeah, is that? Let's break it down even more. It's, do you want someone to purchase something on your website? Or do you want them to schedule something with you? Because you don't have a product. Maybe you do have a service. Mm-hmm. Or do you just want it to have information? Mm-hmm. Right? Like Kind of like, this is who we are and about. This is who we are. Come to our website to learn a little bit more. Exactly. So that is rule number one is really nail down because depending if you're going to sell something on an e-commerce site or just have a website that will tell you what platform right off the bat that you can choose. Mm -hmm. So number one, because in all reality, there's, there's, if I could think about it, there's like four types of platforms. Well, there's many, but the four main ones, we'll go over the four main ones that are most common, Mm -hmm. if you will. Yeah. And let's just start with the two most common, the most affordable well, I don't even know if they would be the most affordable, but probably the most user friendly. Most user, okay, most affordable upfront. Yes, we should say yes. Because in the long and term, if you have no experience with web yeah, development, if you do not have experience, you want a low cost option upfront and a super user friendly experience. We we got two contenders. We have the Squarespace and, and the Wix. Wix. Yes. Yeah, so those are two really good platforms. If you guys aren't familiar with them. Um, you go to squarespace.com, you can go to wix.com. I think we should talk, let's talk about the pros and then we'll also say the cons about that. Yeah, sure. And and with those websites, it's very much like drag and drop. Yes, it's, which is a pro. Yeah, it's which very is a user pro. friendly. Very user friendly. So like if you're an older uh, person that's trying to get into tech and tech's not your forte, this is a great option that you can just go to one of those websites and build your own website relatively easily mm-hmm. and relatively quick. I always like to say if, if you can use, if you can navigate through Canva, then you can pretty much do a Wix or a Squarespace and we've talked about Canva before and, and that's mm-hmm. a great option for... It's like a images. user-friendly Photoshop. Yep, for sure. So, so pretty much drag and drop, that's a big pro. Um, another pro I would say is it's fairly quick. You can get quick. that up and going because of how drag and drop it is you know? it, especially like with youtube university honestly like if you typed in squarespace setup it will walk you through step by step on how to make yeah. a really good looking website yeah and they're clean because again it's all kind of templated out in, in a way it's templated but you just have a couple uh modifications you can do to kind of customize your own yep and that's the same with wix and then um some of the cons though to that is there's a lot, but <laughs> I was just about to be like, to be honest, there's a lot more cons than there are pros, but the pros are heavy. That Those two are heavy pros where it's, if you're not familiar, yeah, you can jump in there. It's user friendly, super affordable upfront, and it's, you know, it, relatively fast. You can make a website. Emphasis on upfront though, because one of the biggest cons is you pay indefinitely. You you have a ball and chain you're to Squarespace. You're stuck with Squarespace or what? Yeah, so like if you... So how their platforms work is you purchase the, you build the website, you purchase the website, um, you build it, and then you have to pay them a monthly fee for the end of time. As long mm-hmm. as you have your website with them, you're paying them money a monthly fee. It's essentially your hosting. So you have to have you have to pay for hosting, but when you get your stuff with Wix, that's all bundled into one price. Yeah, you're paying for like the website builder, depending where you bought your domain. But yeah, the hosting, the website builder, and then any of the plugins or the other additional stuff that they offer that they try to upsell you with. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, you're going to need this and you're going to need this. You need forms. Like, you, you have to pay for forms. <laughs> yeah, you have to pay for so much so much different stuff. And so depending on the functionality of your website, like what you want to do with it, um, it can get really pricey. And oh, yeah. it, over a year, you're going to be spending way more money than some of the other options out there. So definitely. So anyways, that's that's Wix and Squarespace. Was you know, there any other cons? We only talked about the one that was the 
the price. What was there? I swear there was another one. Well, it's it's way, chain. yeah. There, there's a lot. There's a lot. So another one would be you're you're not in control of like meta tags or data tags for SEO purposes. Yes. Um, you're not really in control. You're on limited the, on what you you're can. You're very limited on what you can do on those sites. Right. Versus a, a more customizable site that um, there's a lot more that you can you yeah. can do. And it's been argued. Um, one of the things I've seen argued um, with those type of sites is that SEO will probably be worse because you can't do a ton of on-page SEO other than like content yeah. and keywords. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. So what's the solution to that? What's the next one? Well, before we get into the solution of that, I think the next easy one for e-commerce Okay, yeah, so we're now we, jump over to e-commerce. Yeah, yeah, because we have Squarespace and Wix if you just need a, you know, hey, this is about me. I'm a life coach. I'm a massage therapist. Book now, mm-hmm. right? You could do that with mm-hmm. a Wix or Squarespace. The next one is if you actually have products. And yep. if you have products... You're considered an e-com. Yeah, if you're selling stuff, the super easy, affordable option is going to be your Shopify. Shopify is amazing. Honestly, like, I, I genuinely enjoy Shopify for two reasons. It's super easy to get up and going. Yes, it also has some of the best um, integrations. Integrations, yes. Yeah, that, like we talked about this on, when we did our Instagram deep dive, mm-hmm. where you can hook up your Shopify account to your Facebook, to Instagram, to, and that hooks up Everything to Instagram, pulls. and then you can purchase your product straight through Instagram page oh, yeah. and Facebook shop. You can make catalogs. You can do everything. It literally integrates with every major advertising avenue, as well as. A lot of the, uh, like you were saying, Instagram, Facebook shops. And we've seen a lot of different types of companies use Shopify. Mm-hmm. We've seen everything from shirts to jewelry to fruit. To everything. Yeah, all like, sorts of stuff. It's, it's a very wide range of things that you can, and CBD, like everything. That being said, though, it is very geared towards traditional products. You can make it work with these kind of weirder stuff, but it is mm-hmm. geared towards like, quantity size yeah like this is the one product that i offer there's not very many variations of this one product exactly. you can't customize what this one product is exactly or like pick what up you location. see is what you get yeah. yeah pick up locations or you know what i mean mm-hmm. um so shopify so if you are brand new to websites and it's pretty affordable too by the way yeah very affordable same thing though you're just kind of you're, you're stuck paying it forever it's up front. <laughs> yeah you're just going to have to kind of get used to that with these easy, faster websites. You're, you're going to be paying them for quite a while. Just mm-hmm. just know that. It's also not the most customizable. That's why I'll also say it. it's a little bit harder to customize. You can definitely customize with it. With templates. and With templates or if you have experience in web development and coding. Yeah. So a lot of times um, we have customers that want to stay on Shopify. Mm-hmm. And so rather than just, you know making a crappy Shopify site. We a basic, I don't even call it crappy. It's basic. It's basic, yeah. We, we pimp it out. We pimp your ride and we kind of go ham in Shopify sometimes mm-hmm. to make some really robust websites. And again, it's because of the functionality of the integrations. And that takes a lot of time too, but um, Shopify is a really good platform. Yeah, a+. I definitely <laughs> like Shopify. Shopify is really If I was good. selling stuff online, Shopify would be my first option. So those are your easy... Uh, User friendly, uh, user friendly, low upfront cost solutions to a website. Mm-hmm. The next step, and this is where we usually push people, is is to uh, a, a WordPress. Right. I feel like that's the realm that we really live in. We do. We do a ton of stuff on WordPress, mm-hmm. and the reason why is because we we have basically total control. Yep. It's super robust. You can do almost virtually anything. Anything. Because it's all got CSS. It has all the options that you could ever do, as well as having some amazing plugins that can make your life so much easier to, to work with. So. Yeah, there's any plugin you'd ever want. There's any functionality Genuinely. you'd ever want. There's any template that you would ever want. Like You can literally do anything on a WordPress site. Now, the thing with WordPress sites, Koa, Pro. they're not user-friendly. <laughs> Yes, it's definitely a huge learning curve. I, I, I tried to have our web developer teach me something on there one time. Mm-hmm. It was like I was looking at Egyptian. Yeah. I was like, wait, what? Wait, what? It looks like I got, I got a little bit of it, and I was like, okay, this is how, but it, it, there's, it, it, I mean, I feel like I'm pretty tech savvy, mm-hmm. and it was definitely a stretch for me. But I mean, see, if I spent like an afternoon on it, like digging into it, I think I could get it, but it's not one of those things that you just jump on and create a site. And, and well, and that's the thing is if you, pay for a, a theme plugin, then it makes it simpler. 
But the thing is, it helps. It speeds things up as far as build time. But you flip off the builder, and that's when you see all the crazy gibberish. And that's why it's so nice is because you can go from, like, get boxes here, get major content up here, yeah. and then fine-tune those boxes because of how you can do all the custom code. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. But once again, I, I spent like 30 minutes with him and mm -hmm. I was like, I'm done with this. Like, it's a I lot. Don't, I don't have time. I don't have the mental. Like, I just do like my time is spent somewhere else way better. Yeah. <laughs> like, See, and I've dabbled into it a bit over the last few years and I can navigate my way, especially through the plugin that we have because we've had it for a long time now. Yeah. And I can find I can I can get the general gist of things but that's when i send it to the web team and i'm like hey we need to have this do a little bit more i need this box literally a couple pixels to the right or left and that's where they can go in and they do their little thing that to, kills it to go off topic just a little bit because i'm curious um we build landing pages right mm -hmm. and we use our, our service the unbounce unbounce fire you, you're really unbounce good at unbounce. Unbounce. do yeah. you think that helps the wordpress like is it no. similar at all no, no, it's completely different. No. See, I don't even know. See, we're, I'm dumb. With uh, the builder, the best way I can describe this is, do you remember MySpace? Yeah. It's a lot like MySpace. The, the theme builder, no, no, no. The theme builder that we have for oh, yeah, WordPress yeah, yeah. Yep. is very similar to how um, MySpace used to be, where there was you like put your sections. your music in your section. Well, you, it's all built out in sections. And so on the back end, you can kind of visualize where the sections are, even though obviously it doesn't look anything like a web page. Okay. But you know how like, you could be like, okay, this is the top section. I'm going to put this html code in there that's gonna make like things drop from the top of my page yeah or like this is where my about section is and i'm going to do something that makes my about section change that's how our builder is for wordpress wordpress what about unbounce, unbounce just like uh wix and wix and uh square drag and drop Squarespace. even easier than that it's, it's just, just easier. it's so drag and drop if, if anybody's out there and you guys are doing landing pages i would highly recommend Unbounce. Unbounce. That has been a game changer for us. Yeah, we've used Unbounce for like two plus years. Oh, yeah. It's so. like, uh, again, it's like Canva. It's like you can literally do so many things and it pops up as a web page. It's, it's a beautiful oh, thing. That's really, I, I, yeah, I didn't know. So I was just like, is that similar? Is that why you know WordPress better? But I guess not. So No. And it's taken me a long time to understand the WordPress stuff. And but. so WordPress is awesome. You can do anything on there. Mm -hmm. um, you can do way more stuff, I, in my opinion, with SEO. Um, oh, yeah. On page SEO. Oh, yeah. Because, again, you can access all of the back end stuff. Yeah. With all these other ones that we talked about, it's difficult to access the back end. And this brings us to our kind of last category of website. Wait, wait, I did oh. want to talk about pricing on it. Oh, go for pricing. Guess how much it costs. How much is WordPress, you know? Yeah, only because you told me before the podcast. <laughs> free 99. Yeah, so WordPress is free. You can, you can jump on there yourself and get into it. Jump in there and start doing coding again if you have experience with coding. But... Where the price does come in is to get those fancy plugins like we have that help you speed things up. Or just have a web developer that just understands code and how that all goes together. But that might even cost you more. <laughs> yeah. And so that, once again, it's pros and cons. It's like, yeah, you can get a WordPress and you can try to spend some time on there and make your own WordPress site. And, you know, tech savvy people will get it. But if you want like a really robust, good looking, awesome website and with the things that we're going to go into even... Mm -hmm. um, you're gonna. You, sh you might as well pay someone that knows what they're to doing to do it. And the last thing I wanted to say is, I know we said Shopify was ecom. You can ser you can link up uh, like Woo WooCommerce to uh, a WordPress site and sell stuff yeah, through that too. So that's one thing to know. You can sell WordPress is so again robust that it can do ecom. It can do your basic form submission. It can do yeah, it does literally everything. everything. Yeah, anything that you want a WordPress site to do, you can something do. can plug into it. So and so our last category then. And it's a major category. Obviously, oh, yeah. there's more platforms out there, but these are like the main main ones. It is fully customizable. Yeah, when you're literally going in and writing code for a box. Yeah, exactly. And you know, and these websites are are crazy. Like you need a full stack developer front end, back end. Um, it's the OG of websites, though, if you think about it. Yeah, if you're it's gonna, how they were built. All of these are built around that. Exactly. And this is like you want a custom, one of a kind website. And these these sites literally start at probably like 20 grand and go all the way up to like 200 grand plus. 200 plus. Because we're talking about like, I don't know if you guys ever go to, uh, I know you don't like Apple, but their websites. I like Apple. Dude, their websites are the most beautiful thing I've ever gone through. Like, 
It's they, an experience. It is, because as you're scrolling, it's almost like you're just watching like a movie. Things are happening. Oh, and yeah. It, the whole screen will zoom out, and all of a sudden, it's an iPhone screen, and then it'll zoom in, and all of a sudden, you can see all the components of the phone. Yeah. Like, the, uh, the iPad one was so cool when they released it. You scroll, and the screen goes sideways instead of upwards. Oh, that's super cool. Oh, it's a, be- it's a beautiful sight to see. So but that's you- completely so custom. So custom. Yeah, I have to tell the funny story about the custom website. We went and uh, we had a potential really big client, and we were going to do a website for them. Oh. Yeah, uh, don't tell me on there, but yeah. Yeah, yeah you'll, you'll remember when I say yeah. it. And we, ha- we, we had a potential really, really big client, and they wanted a website. And he told me all about this website, and it was super robust and super integrated. Like, there were so many different functions of it that did he Did he work with do. all the cities around? Yeah. <laughs> okay. And yeah. Uh, yeah, he did. And uh, he wanted this really robust website. And, you know, coming from our background, we were like, we could probably simplify a lot of that. So when we went to the drawing board and we mm-hmm. planned it out, we simplified a ton of it and we were going to build it on a WordPress, right? We were going to come build it on a WordPress. <laughs> we were and, and we attempt. quoted him, a, you know, a really pretty penny for his, his website. I mean, it wasn't, a, a, it wasn't for the... For the size, that was a great deal. No, I'm but I'm saying for like the average person getting a website, I mean, it was it was an expensive website. Oh, oh, for the you average, know what I mean? Yeah, for sure, it was definitely a very expensive website, it was, but it was extremely robust. And and I remember when I went and uh, talked with this gentleman and pitched him this website and the price, he kind of laughed at me, and he's like, he's like, no, you don't understand. Like, you're missing a couple zeros. And I was like, oh, you want like a fully custom from <laughs> talking scratch. six figures. You're, you're talking this. like a, like a uh, 200 grand. And it's funny because in business, like you learn those things and we didn't get that deal. Um, he decided to go with someone else, but he was wanting a fully customizable thing. And if I would have known that, I mean, we wouldn't have quoted him in the first place because we don't do. No, it's too much. It's just too much for it would where take we're at. A but full team. And not only that, with that specific one, I mean, there was so much maintenance that would be involved. There's with it. so much stuff that goes into that. And that's just not what we focus on what we're really good at. Yeah, that's not our vibe. So anyways, that's a funny story because there's people out there that you would never know that are expecting a hundred thousand dollar website, a $200,000 website. And you go pitch them a, you know, a $10,000 website and they laugh at you. So yes. Anyways, those are the major platforms. I think that covers pretty much the major ones. Yeah. Um, if you, if you're thinking, if you're a business owner, you're thinking about getting a website, I hope, hopefully some of that helps you what to look for and, and to know pricing. Nail down what you want to do. And, and with, and one more thing on the pricing thing with the WordPress sites, it really comes down to the, your designer and developers. If you're paying mm-hmm. someone to do it for you, because there's some people that will make some really good WordPress websites for fairly affordable, a oh, few hundred sure. dollars, a few hundred dollars, you for know, sure. um, you can find but, someone on Fiverr to do that. And then there's other companies, wink, wink, nudge, nudge, that we might be a little more advanced on how we can set up your website and we might be more expensive but the quality's there. And, and there's a very wide range of people that can do WordPress. Mm-hmm. So, you know, look at their work. Absolutely. I was going to say, that was the best thing you can do is check somebody's portfolio out. Yeah, look at their portfolio. Check out some of their websites that they've done. and Get work, familiar with the terminology. Like, I think this is going to be helpful. Yeah, this, will be, this will be super helpful. So, anyways, after platforms, now we have our website. Mm-hmm. What's the most, uh, most important Component component of having a website. What's what's so like, once you have your home base, yeah, what's the most home base. what's the most valuable tool that you could have? I would probably say, and like setting up your analytics, setting up your pixels, exactly. like your tracking stuff. Because if you don't have those set up, then you're kind of just you don't know who's visiting your site. Yeah, you don't know where they're coming from. You don't have any data on it. All right. It's it's literally you built something. That you're just and now you're like, on. if you're selling stuff, you're just hoping that people are buying something. And, and you, you don't, don't even know, know you where don't they know. came from. You don't from. even know if people are coming to your website. Yes. And so um, tracking and analytics is number one. So right now, two things. If you don't have Google Analytics on your site, yes. that's number one. Literally number one out of everything. You can get away... Google will do everything. And what you is You can get Google? away with doing not having to do Facebook. And you what is Google, Google Analytics, Koa? It literally is a data tracker for every single page on your website for your whole entire ecosystem of your website. Like you can tell where traffic is coming from, whether it's coming from 
Facebook, whether it's being come, you know, coming from search or if they're just searching it directly into the URL, like there's a million different things that you can do. It even goes so uh, detailed. You can tell if it's mobile. You can see you can see where the they're source, from. where they're coming from, how long they're staying on their page, where they're going, bounce like, rates. There's so much that Google Analytics does. So that's number one. So if you have a website right now and you don't have Google Analytics set up, set that up. Get on it right now seriously like stop what you're doing and figure out how to put google analytics on your damn website that's number one it will be a game changer and and, and it, that's even if you're not selling anything, anything that will just give you an idea of how many people are actually visiting your site and where they're coming from exactly and how to remarket those people and where to spend your time and energy so you know how to get more people exactly on your website. if you're trying to get a little bit more advanced and you're really trying to push a, again a product it's a necessity i can't yes. emphasize that enough and the second one to that is Facebook. Facebook pixel. Mm -hmm. So everyone has a face. I mean, 99 point. I, when, every time I say everyone has a Facebook, there's that one freaking person <laughs> that's like, oh, I don't have a Facebook. Anti-social media. It, it's shut up. Everyone has a Facebook, dude. Like uh, your mom has a Facebook if you don't. All yeah. Right? <laughs> that's a big fact. The big facts. So anyways, uh, Facebook pixel. Explain, Facebook pixel, explain Facebook pixel that, is, is a similar component it's it's almost the same thing it's just tethered for facebook and it allows you to do facebook marketing like you can't take the data from google analytics i mean i guess you could you could download it it's so much more complicated versus putting a pixel on your site and then all of a sudden you can use all that same information directly into facebook natively yeah and so you can market on facebook and use mm -hmm. that information on facebook to retarget re you can be like hey anybody who visited this page I want to show them this ad. This I, I, I can create an audience. I should say that I can make an audience of these people. I can now track conversions directly in Facebook. Yes. It's a, a plethora of different things you can do. With, so with right that. now, if you have a Facebook, if your business has a Facebook and if you're using ads, that is my biggest thing. If, if you're doing Facebook ads and you don't have a pixel set up, you're, you're literally you're doing it up. so wrong. You're doing it so wrong. You don't know what the hell you're doing. If you have a company that's doing Facebook ads for you and they, and they don't have a pixel set up on your website, mm -hmm. fire them. Pro tip really <laughs> quick. There is a plugin for both of these in Chrome that you can just go to your page, turn that on and it will tell you whether or not you have a pixel or whether or not you have Google analytics. Do you know what that plugin is called? Uh, I don't know off the top of my head the name, but I have it right here. If you search Pixel Finder in the little uh, extensions, literally search Pixel in the extensions and then also search Analytics in the extensions and it's the it'll, first one to pop, pop up. Best thing ever. Whenever we're doing an audit of people's sites, that's one of the very first things we always do. We, we look for analytics and tracking. So Because again, somebody's messing up if they don't have that stuff set up for you and you're paying them. Yeah. So after that, Let's get into some of these acronyms that we hear people talking about, specifically CRO and CTAs. Okay, okay let's get cool. into this. So the first one, CRO. CRO has a lot to do with design. What it stands for is conversion rate optimization. And what does that mean, Koa? Exactly what it is. So think about this. If you're trying to sell something on your website, you're trying to convert people, right? You're trying, you're trying to make to a convert conversion. them into a sell. Right? And so or into convert them to do something. To do on something. Your whether website. that's a fill out simple fill out a form, simple phone call, or all the way down to making big Request purchases. More information, yes. fill out a form, schedule an appointment, those buy are all a conversions. That's a conversion. Now what a conversion rate is, is it's saying it's how many people visit your site and how many convert. A hundred people came to your rate. site and three people bought. So that would be your 3%, 3% conversion rate. Yeah. Now, obviously the O is optimization. And so that's enhancing that and trying to make that conversion rate go up. And it's a, it's a design thing. It's a design. It's, it's, it's the way that you have your website laid out. There's some specific things and I know that we'll get into them, uh, the help with your CRO. But the way I like to look at it is if you go to a page, you want to be able to understand everything and be ready to purchase by the time you scroll to the bottom. Yes. If you have a, a CRO'd out page, it will do that. You'll be like, okay, this is what the product it's, is. It's like a natural. This is why I want to buy this. Yes. If you're a salesperson, it's literally going through a sales process. It's a sales pitch on I, your website. Exactly. I always like to refer uh, like a landing page that's been CRO'd out as your best salesman. salesman. Exactly. Yeah. So a, a bad example of CRO is like if I land on your web page, right? Mm -hmm. I land on your web page and, and let's say you're selling shirts, like a specific t-shirt, right? And your front page is all about 
your company and maybe you and your backstory and the whole story of it. And it's just like the long text. And then I go to the second page and it's like about, or uh, find us. And it has like your location. And then finally like that third page is like, Oh yeah. And here's our t-shirts. Mm-hmm. Like you're not going to get- not dropping any, uh, what is the word when it's like a soft close? You're not, you're not getting any, like you're not building, you're not it. even giving, yeah. You're not even giving people an option to purchase along the yeah, way. You're not, you're not warming up the cell to, to, to make a purchase. And so anyways, CRO is super important and there's a lot of stuff that goes into CRO and there's no way we can cover all that today. No. But um, I think the, the one thing I did want to cover is CTA. Yeah. So. And let's just talk about CTAs real quick. Yeah. So a call to action. Yes. A CTA is a call to action. And what that means is it's, it's literally giving people the option to convert. You're asking like, hey, them, do something. You're asking make an action. them, your, your potential client to do something. Right. Mm-hmm. And so uh, a really easy example of this is let's say you go to a website and you have a pop up that says sign up for our newsletter. That's a CTA. Yeah. Um, let's a say, I go, are typically let's say I go to the, the, your website and at, at the very top, it's like, learn more. That mm-hmm. could be a CTA. Well, and or purchase in, now. Exactly. In some cases, uh, people already know who you are and it's not like they need to go through your whole site. They just want to buy so your damn rather, product. Exactly. Rather than making them scroll all the way through to the bottom, have them just be have able them to be able to purchase, purchase it, up at it the top. right there. Exactly. And so I think that's a huge thing. Um, a good rule of thumb that we like to do is have at least three t- CTAs in your landing pages. Yeah. Or, or what about your front homepage? Same. Same thing, right? Same. I always look at them all as a landing page. If somebody lands on that page, you want them to be able to convert with Avid and click anywhere else. Exactly. Um, one of my biggest pet peeves is when I go to a website and let's say you have that sign up for a newsletter or save 10% mm-hmm. and it pops up on every goddamn oh. page. I don't that, know. I don't know that, what's more annoying between that or having a video automatically play. <laughs> oh, that's a, that's a terrible one too. I hate that. That's a, just the design flaw, but the with, worst. with your CTAs, you can get overboard with them. Um, for sure. Um, there's companies out there. Like I said, I, I, I land on their front page and I get pop-ups every single new page load. There's a pop-up asking me to do something I, like a, if I go to your website, there's no way I'm going to sign up for your goddamn newsletter or email list without knowing what you do. A right. B, if I get that every single time I go to a new page, it feels spammy gimmicky and i'm leaving your your stupid website <laughs> scammy like, it's scammy <laughs> bye, get bye, the bye, hell out bye, of here bye, so bye. cro ctas yes there's a there's there's a good amount of ctas that there should be on your page call to actions be able to get them to do something fill out a form request more information um or purchase now right with CRO, we can't, we, there's this, that, that's a whole Does episode it by itself. Yeah, honestly, because think, it, it's design, it's psychology, it's marketing, it sells. Exactly. There's and so much that goes into CRO. I think that's one that we should even break out by itself. I know we said we want to talk about these all, and maybe we even just break them out and we do full episodes on each of them because I feel like we could fill up. Yeah. Well, a whole thing. The, and that's kind of like the crash course to this. Mm-hmm. But the thing I want to bring up, Koa, is you can have the prettiest, most lovely, well-built, CRO'd, cta site out Expensive. there. You could have paid thousands, you hundreds buy, of thousands of this for a website. Yeah, you could pay 10 grand for well, a what website. What good is it? What good is it? If you don't got traffic. If you don't have traffic to your goddamn <laughs> website. Like, tell me that. Like, so you have a great website. How are you getting people there? And this is a very natural, uh, uh, you know movement into SEO or to traffic to your website mm-hmm. to paid advertising. Yes. So the, the two main things that we can touch on, and we'll touch on them briefly because once again, there's just, there's so much that goes Full into episodes it. episodes of this specifically. But basically there's organic traffic to your website and there's non-organic traffic to your website. In layman's terms, one might be uh, from Google, a Google search and your website pops up and they go there. That would be an organic search, right? And non-organic is paid advertising which google has done a really good job at blending those together because of their ads yes so you run a google ad you run a facebook ad you pay an influencer and all of a sudden these people are like oh let's go to the site because they dropped a link or you're popping up somewhere and now you're going to get that non-organic traffic i I like to call it paid paid traffic is a really good word for it Mm -hmm. um paid traffic to your website those are the different ways that you can get there. So once again, like Google ads, Facebook ads, yes, a ads. paying an influencer, you know, you're paying someone or something mm-hmm. to promote a link, whether that's a landing page or your website mm-hmm. to, for people to get there. So let's dissect like with, with uh, paid, that's kind of like 
you're f- it's a fast track. Fast That's track. why I like to look at it. It's a fast track, a fast route to get traffic immediately. Obviously, it costs money. Yeah. But you're going to see results a lot faster. Now, SEO would be one of the biggest ways to do the organic route. Yeah, to, to, to get more organic people finding your website. And it, it's really funny because it's still paid. Like, you still pay for SEO, but you're you're not paying it for, like, a direct person. Like, you're not targeting someone. Does that make sense? Like, yeah. Like, with an ad, you're specifically targeting a demographic. You are with SEO, but it's more... It's so much more broad. You, like, it's... You're, you're helping people that are already looking for you find you easier. Mm-hmm. Rather than us targeting the people that are like, oh... And go there. a big part of that is if you were to stop doing paid ads, yeah. all of a sudden your traffic's going to stop. And we we discussed this. And so at the be- this is a huge thing we introduced in 2021. This is a huge thing, guys, because listen, me and Makoa had the mindset of we don't want to do SEO. We don't want to offer it because why would I do SEO for a long amount of time and compete and you're not even guaranteed and it's a long process when we can just run a Google ad and mm-hmm. be above organic already. Already, day one. So this is- And I will absolutely attribute to that because it's like I've been always, screw SEO. And SEO- Give me some money and I'll get you to the top yeah, real quick. Exactly. And that was our mindset. And just so everyone knows, I don't know if we mentioned it, SEO is search engine optimization. Mm-hmm. It just means- we want to optimize you to be searched on Google. So anyways, with uh, with our mindset being like, we don't need to focus on SEO, we kind of realized something. And, and so at the beginning of the year, we actually started offering SEO. Mm-hmm. We have a client. He's our oldest client uh, with us, mm-hmm. you know, not age, but like with us. He's, he's, our, he's our longest standing client with us. We've been running ads for them for, you know, two, two plus years. Yep. And we realized, man, as soon as we stop running ads, traffic's going to die. His traffic <laughs> dies. Yeah. And so, you know, if we would have been doing SEO for the last two years in tandem or just SEO. Yep. If, at this point in at time. At this point in time. Two years later, they would be ranking let, organically number one, honestly. And let's say he stops using us. It, it's, it was almost a disservice to our clients not to be able to offer that. To at least give them that option. You give them the option. And, and in a, again, the, the best way to do it is to do both of them together. Yes. And if I, and honestly, like when I've been thinking about like SEO and paid traffic and non-paid traffic and, and the two, I think I lean more towards the long game. You know, I think if, I, I think it's a very shorter game. I'm talking, you know, one to three months when we start running ads. Um, for paid traffic to your website or mm-hmm. to your product, or your landing page, whatever it is. But SEO is a longer game, and I think that you'll be better off in the long run if, if you do double down on SEO. And do SEO, for sure. Because the moment you stop doing paid ads or Google ads, traffic stops. Right. Like, no one finds you anymore. Mm-hmm. If, you know, with SEO... If you, and I'll say this, if it, it depends if you're in, like, a competitive market. It, oh, for sure. But, I mean, you're not actively targeting, targeting those people. Yep. And with SEO, you do SEO for a year or two years and you stop doing SEO, you're going to stay at the top for a while or you'll, you'll, while. you'll keep your rankings up there for quite a long time mm-hmm. because there's been so much that is done that has just helped Google find your site. Yes. And, uh, and so I'm, I lean towards SEO for the long game. Mm-hmm. And, and there's a lot that you can do with SEO and we'll just touch briefly on it. Um, yeah, because again, I think SEO is one thing. Maybe we even get our, we, uh, we have our SEO team we have guys our, over to do some of this. We have stuff. our SEO specialist on. Yeah, that'd be kind of cool. Maybe dig into some SEO. But basically, in a nutshell, guys, there's on-page SEO and there's off-page SEO. Mm-hmm. And, and we can get into that another time, but there's things that you can do on your website. There's things that you can do off your website. Yeah. Now, Koa, I hate to cut this short, brother. But uh, a lot we can talk about, but yeah, we got stuff to we'll do today. I we know. Can, so anyways, uh, I hope this episode kind of answered some of your questions and, and maybe it helps you understand a website. We'll bring in another guy, um, probably uh, our guy for SEO and we can go over SEO. We want to jump right back into websites. There's just, we realize there's a lot that goes into there. And unfortunately we do have some stuff. We have some other yes. things. And this we have is to just a today. good overview. Like I said, good overview, good overview. We'll dive into everything more specifically. Where can they find us, Koa? All right. You can catch this podcast. Of course, on YouTube is where you'll find this video. You can see it on all the major streaming networks, including Apple music and Spotify podcasts. And then again, they're on our website too. And give us a follow, follow us on Instagram and Facebook 
at Monarch Social Brand. Yeah, thanks for listening, guys. See you next time.